Welcome to our civics lesson today on God and government. I'm joined today by Dr. Sterling Lacey and Joe Cruz. They're both excellent teachers in our church and are probably two of the most knowledgeable people that I know on America's Constitution and our Christian history here in America. They're going to be sharing with us some thoughts on God and government. The question for today is, what happens to a nation when Christians don't participate in civil government? When Christians are not involved in civil government, civil government actually becomes a source of idolatry. God established the purposes of government, civil government, in Genesis 9-6, and that was to restrain evil. We see that principle reiterated again in the New Testament in Romans 13. If Christians are not involved in, in civil government, then it becomes idolatrous. What happens when Christians don't participate in civil government? Exactly what's happening in America today. We see a government that is no longer constrained by the bounds of the Constitution. Thomas Jefferson said, Let no more be heard of confidence in men, but bind them down to mischief by the chains of the Constitution. If God's people are not carrying his principles into the school board meetings, into the city council and county council governments, into the state and federal legislatures, the other side, the humanists, certainly aren't going to sit around and say, Well, we better hear from the Christian side. The only way God's principles are going to be heard is for God's people to carry him in to the political arena. The scripture says that when the wicked rule, the people groan, but when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. Uh, we talk about uh, that, or we hear it said that uh, you're just being legalistic. Well, there's 613 laws in the Old Testament. Uh, the Ten Commandments are basically a summary of those laws, and then Christ reduced them to two, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Because we've lost that foundation of moral freedom, which actually is the basis of political freedom, today the United States Congress issues over 50,000 pages of legislation every year. Edmund Burke, who died in 1797, said that all is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. That's exactly what's happened to a great extent in America to this day. Our seminaries have not taught our pastors about the principles that God has for civil government and therefore they've not taught them to their flocks and therefore the Christian people think of politics as dirty politics. It's not dirty politics, it's God's field and God wants us to go back and take charge and bring his principles to bear once again in America. Christ told us that to whom much is given much is required. Our nation, we as Christians in this nation, have been giving more freedom than any other nation in the history of the planet. Benjamin Franklin was remarked, what kind of government have you given us, Mr. Franklin? He said, we've given you a republic, madam, if you can keep it. If Christians are not involved in the process of civil government and voting and electing and holding their leaders accountable, we will lose this republic. The very best solution is for God's people who are called by his name to lead the way by understanding, teaching, praying about, and putting back into practice God's principles for America's civil government. As the election draws near, I want to encourage you to pray for the candidates that God would have you vote for. I would encourage you to educate yourself on their values and do your duty as a Christian citizen to help America remain the greatest nation on earth.